Colton RV creates fantastic memories that will change your life forever. Have you dreamed of getting into glamping in your own RV? Colton RV can help you take that step into the future with a new or used RV. Talk with a Colton RV team member online, by phone, or in person and see hundreds of RVs, from tent trailers to motorhomes and everything in between. It's all about great selection, unequaled service, and low prices. Open late at two convenient locations, one in Tonawanda and one in Orchard Park, New York. Now is the time to see the future at Colton RV. Want to take your camping to the next level? Then why not try glamping? Welcome to RV Glamping Adventures, where you can have a little glamour with your travel adventures. Please join your hosts, Neil and Kathy, as they share RV glamping information, RV park reviews, product recommendations, and so much more. Here's Neil and Kathy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of RV Glamping Adventures with Neil and Kathy. I'm Neil. And I'm Kathy. Uh, we haven't talked to you guys in a little while, and I think we should start out by saying we're sorry. Very, very, <laughs> very sorry. But life has taken us. Oh, my God. In busy so many ways. directions. Busy and ways. Time flies when you're having fun, and we've been having lots of fun. So I don't want to give a whole lot of excuses except that life has been busy. And we've had to, I think one of the themes that we talk about a lot on our show, besides our being, is, you know, prioritizing. Yes. So we kind of came back from the last trip that we went on down to Florida, which was a wonderful beach vacation we'll talk about in a second. Um, but we kind of came back and we were just sort of hit the pavement running. And it's just been one thing after another and all good stuff. But... We've really had to prioritize. It's been really tough to just sort of put our heads together and take the time to sit down and do a show. And every week we're like, oh my God, we got to do a show. Oh my gosh, we got to do a show, right? Well, and the other part is too, yesterday was the first day we've actually had off. Yeah. Since we got home from vacation. <laughs> we've been so working we, seven we days do seven a week. Days. So again, we've talked a lot about prioritizing. And I can't say that this hasn't been by choice as far as the things that we've chosen to do. Some of you know that I opened up a, a shop to sell my art out of in a really cute town up by us here in New York. And that's just been going really, really well. And it's kept me really busy. And I'm having the time of my life. So that was a priority thing that Neil and I decided to go for. Plus the business that we have is Neil as a chiropractor. So juggling those two things that, you know, it's what we really want to be doing and what we love doing. And, you know, we still have, well, kind of one and a half kid at home. We've yeah. got our third is about to graduate high school. So we've had that going on. And our, our youngest is in track. So we've had that going on. So it's just been a bit of a juggling game. And, um, but all good. Like I can't, it's nothing, we're not doing anything I would want to eliminate. No. Everything is good. Everything and we're doing super great. Super, super great. positive. But you have to prioritize. But also, I've never seen you happier. I've never been happier. I think this has been really a really fun it's experience. It's been a really cool sort of chapter in our life you right know? now. And trying to include, and we are including our being in that because that's our other love, has been, uh, you know, it's just been a little different year for us. And one thing we talked to you guys about um, in some of our last year episodes and earlier this year, because we haven't done a whole lot this year, was how we were changing how we're using our RV because yeah. it's been a little different. Now, we did take a trip where we put on about 2,000 miles on the truck. <laughs> and we'll review that, but that we'll was fantastic. That. that was fantastic. But we're going to be doing a lot more local stuff, which we want to talk to you guys about today, too. Um, so, again, I'm sorry that we haven't done many episodes, but it's out of just trying to, like, no, Kathy, keep there's it all no together. Excuses. I, there there really are no isn't. excuses Except but, we've been busy, so we're making and, excuses. And I'm kind of flattered to say a few people have been like, a, like I, you don't know really who's listening or what's going on out there. And it's like, oh, maybe nobody cares. We haven't done a show. And then we've been getting like, hey, guys, where's the shows? We're waiting. I'm yeah. like, oh, my God. Okay, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. You know, I've and gone back and I've, I've listened to your other ones just to get me through. And I'm like, oh, they did that. And then it just kind of went blank. And, yeah. and again, I'm really sorry. So we're going to try to get back on more of a routine and a schedule with that. But we're, you know, we can just sort of do our best and put a good show. We want to put a good show out there. So I didn't want to like rush anything and just throw out something blah. So hopefully this isn't blah. <laughs> but we have a I lot don't know, but I got to go soon. Yeah, so no, we, no, no we have a lot to talk about. So why don't we start with probably the best thing to start with is our trip down to Florida, which honestly feels like yesterday. Like I, it just, I don't know, it just has flown by since we got back. Well, we had our very first trip of the season and really, our new in, fifth in my, wheel. In my thing, this is like a really big 
first trip in the fifth wheel. Oh, this was... the other one was just a weekend. That doesn't count. Right. So this was also not only our first trip of the year, but the first trip really in as a family. Year. I mean, and then it had its trials. It had its tribulations. It was amazing. It was... I don't... Well, yeah, we had some... <laughs> yeah, but we'll, we we'll talk about it. So, anyways, we went down to... Uh, well, we, at first we were going to go to Destin. We were kind of excited about that. In and, Florida. In Florida, which is on the Gulf Coast. And we actually pulled an audible and changed probably about two weeks what prior to What does that mean, pulled an audible? It's a football term. Oh, that's you kind okay. of like you know. I'm gonna make a call at the line to do something. I don't watch different. a lot of football, so well, yeah. But it's a football Unless, except for um, the Super Bowl. I watch that for the it's halftime you bet show on it. and the squares. You bet on it. That's <laughs> but it. I've never heard the term audible. Okay, because so to me that meant like hearing aids or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, yes, go on. Sorry, I just I had to. Catch wow. I, wow. <laughs> no, you know. That's good. That's good. Hey, I'm glad. When I do you ever you use something? that in a phrase? Even like. I do use it. So, never. Not never. A, not to you, because apparently it would have not it would worked. Right over so my head. It would have been like, really? That's good. Okay, you, anyway. So you're having problems here. Pulled an audible. I, yep. Because that's what we did. We wound up looking at another direction, and we went to Beverly Beach Camp Town in Actually, Flagler. I think it came down more like, I'm going to explain it a little bit differently well, for those of us who aren't football fans. Um, but basically, we were talking about already planning like we hadn't even gone on our first trip of the year and we're already planning the next trip and uh for next year and what what you know we were like what would you want to do next year at this time of year because we can't wait that first one kicks off the season for us but also like we don't love winter we're not winter people we don't well, who is? we don't ski well people that like outdoor winter sports love it and for a minute and then they go no they the... do they re- there's people i know that like enjoy snow okay we do not um, which I don't know how Those we ended up. Those people are much younger than me. No, there's people. No, that's not true at all. Really? No, come back to reality. And people we know that ski, and they ski all winter, and they love every bit of it. When Connor, when one of our sons was snowboarding, he loved every bit of it. He's seventeen. So there are. There's. No, I know sixty-year-olds <laughs> that are. What are you? Here, let me. Okay. As I get older, I like going down to a beach. So go. Yeah. Keep going. So by the time we get to that, we. Um, you know, we're ready for that first trip. So we're already thinking next year, what would we be doing? And I, I was just bringing up, well, I really like to go to, on the other side of, we tend to go to Florida. It's warm mostly. And so we were talking about how we wanted to go up back on the, um, on the other coast and, you know, be like around Beverly beach, which we've done before. And, uh, you know, just sort of maybe do St. Augustine's and do some stuff we haven't done before. And I remember looking at you going, huh, why didn't we do that this year? Because we've gone to Destin, we've gone to um, Beverly Beach before too, but we haven't done St. Augustine's and sort of some stuff stuff up and down the coast. And you just looked at me and like, well, why don't we do that this year? Yeah. And so we decided to go to Beverly Beach. And it was a great time. We, uh, I think what she's leaving out too is she has a huge love of Disney. But anyways, we took our fifth wheel and we went down... Um, Spent the night in the RV dealership because it's a little different for us living in a condo to put things together to organize it all. But that was great. We were there. Uh, Unfortunately, the night before we left, it snowed, which was unusual for us. So we wound up having... um, I'm confused because you're talking about Disney and now you're talking about... I'll get all into it. Your your thought process is... I'm I'm good. My thought process is great. Let's just pull back one one second. Let me help you out here. We decided to go um, on the East Coast because... We could do all those things and go to Disney. Correct. Well, and yeah, and you didn't say that. You no, just said the love of Disney. But we're right. cl- we were closer right. to why we did that is we were closer. I'm just have, I'm trying to follow, <laughs> and you're having one of your mornings of all over the place. And I love you, honey. I do, but we're going to bring this a little bit more linear. So basically, we decided to go on the East Coast. A, it was closer because we were going down to basically visit our oldest son and to get away from the snow. But he was closer to the East Coast side, to Beverly Beach, than he was to Destin. Well, yeah, he was an hour and a half and as a half opposed to six versus hours. six hours. Yeah. And, okay, so be it Disney's close. That we didn't even decide to go to Disney until last minute. No, but we did go. I mean, Well, that was the whole thought is, you know, we were only an hour and a half away and we had a lot of Disney points. Let's go use them up. And we basically, I like to call it a free day at Disney. There are no free days at Disney. We spent money to get points. Wow. To, yeah. But it was for living, and we used one of those uh, Disney Chase cards, and we had enough points to do a day of Disney. So um, that aside, so it, everything sort of added up, and you made some phone calls, and we were able to switch the trip. We did lose a day's worth of um, 
Yeah, we want to. Yeah, but that's uh, part by, of what happens when you. By canceling, by canceling Dustin, we lost uh, our deposit, which was very minimal. Very minimal. And we were able to, for somehow, somehow over Easter break, we were able to get us a, a right on the beach spot at Beverly Beach. So we just sort of went. It was sort of all very serendipitous, and like we're like, all right, this is what we're doing. And then we were able to do some fun stuff that we'll get into in a second. So for those that don't understand what Audible means and. <laughs> Need to follow a linear conversation. Yeah, who wants linear? That's for that, losers. That's what came to be. So anyway, we ended up every year. Our issue now, since we moved into condo, is how we load up the RV. There you go. Now you're back to where you were. So, so we stayed overnight in the RV dealership, and it because was, they have spots. because they have and they have spots and they have power, and it was really good. We so the plan was to get up in the morning, hook up, and go. And that didn't work out because... Well, I, I was really hoping to... Why that worked out so well from a, an organizational standpoint, too, is it's really nice to be able to plug in, although it wouldn't have mattered because it snowed and it got cold enough. Um, but we really wanted to... have Being at the condo, we just have a spot we can load up. We don't have anywhere we can plug in, load up water, any of that no. stuff. So we just sort of organizationally planned, hey, if we go get the RV dewinterized the week of us leaving... Um, they could put, they've got a few spots at this dealership, which I think a lot do. I just love that about Colton is they have spots that you can pull in, plug in. And, uh, usually there's water, but they hadn't turned it on yet, but they did fill up the, um, holding tanks for us when they did the dewinterizing. So we were able to manage. And so we were able to like fill up the fridge and do a lot of things that we couldn't have done at the condo. Oh, no, no. And we ended up just doing a couple carloads of stuff over to the RV. So it kind of gave us, a, they let us keep it there for a couple of days. So it gave us a few days to get ready. Uh, not as convenient as being in your own driveway, but that's that's sort of what we deal with being right. in a condo. I mean, we just have to improvise. Right. If we ever have a driveway again, it'll be back in the driveway. So it, the beginning of the trip was a little bit of a fiasco in that, like Neil was saying, we woke up that night. Well, the next morning. It started snowing the night before we left on a Friday. And Thursday night, it started snowing. We woke up to three inches of snow, which this is new to us. We don't often winter camp. So no. we were winter camping in the parking lot of Colton RV. So yeah, a couple things fun. happened that morning. It wasn't just the snow. Um, we also had a hitch problem. Well, right from the get-go, we had problems. So basically, we woke up. There was snow. And we were all excited to get going. Now, I had Early. wired... We were trying to leave, we were trying to leave seven? at 6.30. 6.30 or so. So I had wired an in-bed plug, like a seven-way plug. So I got one on Amazon. And we did this because... Because the it was unplugging from the truck every time. So anyways, I had gone ahead and bought a seven-way plug to attach, it was like a plug and play kind of situation, you know, drill the hole in the truck, attach it, and then run the cord, and then it should plug into the existing. Yeah, we had a few problems with what we had had before. Every time we like turned to try to back in, it yeah, went unplugged, and then, then, therefore we weren't truly, mecha- well, we were connected to the hitch, but it wasn't giving us I think it's something to do with, and no, it would actually, no, it would just disconnect. We would be connect, but we'd have no brakes, which was a great way to... Ne- a scary thing nobody can tell if we were turning there was a few things that would happen so we wake up that morning we got three inches of snow to get off Mm -hmm. and we're like well maybe we don't have on our slide outs we don't have slide out covers so this is new to us all of our motorhomes before it had covers so any of that snow as it rolled in and slid in the slide outs uh would have just snow would have fallen off We're, Mm -hmm. we're like well let's just see if we bring in all four slides probably it'll just fall off as it comes in it did not no so, so we had to open them up again. I we just imagined driving down and like all this snow inside the RV dripping and getting it just into. would have gotten everywhere. So right away we're like, all right, we're not getting out of here on time. So Neil, it's snowing like a son of a gun, and Neil had to get up on the roof. Now here while it is snowing. I don't have boots. I have no winter clothes because we're going to Florida, and that day before it was sixty or so. It was warmer. Yeah. So we wound up. I climbed up there with I think it was the brush to wash the RV with. And because sho- I don't even have a shovel in the thing. No, you were using for the truck the extended um, snow. No, I had the brush on, oh, you on did? the roof. Yeah. Oh, I thought so you were to clean using up, no. the truck. So I mean, then I I got the snow off of that. We bring it in. We attach the fifth wheel like we've done many times. I go to plug it in. No lights. So the hitch, it wouldn't connect. the seven way that we installed didn't we? work. <laughs> I installed, didn't work. 
So we wound up having to go um, unhook everything. Thankfully, Colton was opening up in the next we, we half hour. We were so lucky, like, for things they to happen. They were super helpful. We were so lucky because, you know, okay, we dealt with the snow, whatever. We got the slide outs in. Life went on. You know, you tried to, like, wipe it down as much as possible, and, like, that was a whole Yeah, thing. there was no water. Meanwhile, Neil's soaking wet. Oh, my feet were wet for all. So now it's like 7, 7.30. No, it was probably closer to 8 o'clock. And we're not getting anywhere with this whole hitch situation. You were working on that. And it's snowing. Like, really, thank goodness we were in that parking lot that yeah. night. Let's say, well, we wouldn't have... I don't know. I don't know how we even got it. When did you install it? Because how did that work out? I that installed you got it about it? three, four days before we so went away. So you drove it to the... I dropped it off to the dealership. And I, was, I said to Olivia, I'm like, geez. Because Olivia went with me. And uh, I said, geez... I must, you know, not be used to driving this thing because it's not stopping as quick. It gave me, like, I needed, like, an extra five or eight feet to stop. And it turned out that the... You must have a guardian angel because, like, something bad working. could have... The yeah. plug wasn't proper. It wasn't working. Yeah, it wasn't and working. you drove it from our parking spot to the dealership. Yeah. And, like, if we wouldn't have known... I don't know. Something really bad could have happened. Well, going through the mountains of West Virginia it with no trailer brakes would have been awful. And yeah. there's a couple of things I learned from this. Number one, our truck's a beast and I love it because it really was able to control all the weight without brakes. Not safely, <laughs> but it was able to, to do that. Yeah, but it did it. So that was good. The well, other and it thing was is, for a couple of miles. So there's that. But that could have been bad. And thank God we were at Colton. And the other thing is I learned I should have checked it. <laughs> well, yeah, that was sure. that was me at, after not leaving an hour and a half earlier. Going, why when we had it here, did we not have Colton check it? But it was basically just a, it was the guy. It was a um, I, it was a wiring issue that they I did everything right. The plug and play was good. They just the connection had to go in just like a, he had to really crank it, it in. It was and like a little loose wire in there that you cranked couldn't have it in known. with zip ties. And, no, I wouldn't have known, but I wouldn't have known how to fix it either. But he definitely made in. you feel better that you didn't like it wasn't your fault. No, it was no, like it was a thing. Yeah, but thank goodness we were there because let's say we would have brought the RV home here and just did whatever and got groceries there down in Florida. We I mean, we would have gotten off. I'm sure we would have figured it out pretty quick and then been on the side of the road somewhere or totally, I don't yeah. know what. And so we were there enough that I think by 8:30 the guys in the service department were there and they came, they said, come on in. Like they like put everything aside. Yeah, they helped out. This is where we always talk about relationships with your dealerships being so important. It's so important that, that they like stopped everything and they didn't have to do any of this to make sure we were safe and that this got fixed. So we could, and we were in and out of there in 10 minutes. Yeah. And so, okay, we were an hour and a half, two hours behind. So what, which meant we were getting to our destination a little later. But yeah, instead of 8 o'clock, uh, 10 safely. o'clock. <laughs> safely, yeah. Safely. So thank goodness that all, everything happens for a reason. Yep. Thank goodness we were there. And thank goodness we have a great relationship with our dealership. Yeah, Cold they RV were great. They made it happen. took care of us. Yeah. They made it happen. They made it happen. And I know everybody has their stories, good, bad, or whatever, about different dealerships. But we've, we've only had really positive ones. So thumbs, two thumbs up on that. Yes. So the drive down was snowy all the way to, I think, at least Virginia. Yes. And this was a good test, I thought, for us because one of our next big trip, we're going to be doing Florida and Disney at Christmas time. And the only worry, we've, we've never really done a lot of like it. We winterize and we're done by November because we have some crazy winters up here. Exactly. So I, don't, I didn't know how I felt about driving in snow in that thing. But, I mean, and we'll get to more of this, but there are so many parts of this whole trip. Like, yes, this was a weird beginning. But the whole thing with driving it, change my mind about like I didn't even change my mind I I just feel so confident in not overly confident because you can't be overly confident but I felt so okay about the control that the truck has and its ability to to pull this trailer and it just I just felt so much more in control than I ever did in in the class a well and it's one also, thing we kept talking about right yeah it, <clears throat> I found like it also like um the difference from for when we were driving, we were talking about this, is when you're driving in the Class A, you're top heavy. So at, you know you're twelve yeah, I just six always and you feel felt... at your top heavy. Yeah. And when you're pulling the truck, the trucks uh, we have a Ford F three fifty turbo diesel, whatever six point seven. But it felt stable no matter what. Going through the mountains, I felt stable. Going through over bridges, I felt stable. I never felt like there was like a wind drag or anything. Maybe it's the, the way the Grand Design's built. Maybe it's the way the hitch was. I don't know. But I felt 
the whole personally thing. Personally safe. So this was my when first time driving this particular, like, you know, you guys know I've all driven all the other RVs and been comfortable with it and I love driving them. And I knew I could do it. Yeah. I just needed to do it. So I drove first. I got in the driver's side and, and pulled out and I couldn't believe, like, you know, I drove all the way from home to, I went past, where, how far did I go? No, you went past Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. It, I did a good five hours. Five so hours, it got yeah. us past, you know, almost down to West Virginia somewhere. I forget where we stopped and swapped out. We try to do that about every five hours, four or five hours we'll swap out so that the driver's safe and alert. Um, but I was so pleased and impressed through any, like so many of the states, especially West Virginia and Virginia for me, that's sort of the more around the corner, up and down and all over. And, you know, like you said, when we were in the RV, it's more to- in the class A, it was more top heavy. I remember doing this one video of sort of trying to empower women to drive mm-hmm. and it's gotten a lot of hits. And when I had it on Facebook, it got shared a ton and a lot of women are not driving their, yeah. their RVs. And, you know, we've and a lot said, of guys would love the help. I'm just well, saying. and a lot of guys don't. I mean, and that's, that's your marriage. That's between you guys. For us, it's, we believe that if you got two, at least two people driving, you're going to get there with, I think the ratio of safety factor going up exponentially, because I think that, um, you know, when you take turns like that, A, you can drive further in a day. And we try to, we go on these long trips sometimes, so we want to get further on the first day. Because by day two, you're a little more tired and the adrenaline isn't quite there yet, mm-hmm. as it was the day before. So we try to get a lot done that first day. And so then you could take turns and someone can have a nap and or someone could be, you know, we use a GPS and all of that, but somebody could be watching the road and another set of eyes and mm-hmm. a lot of different different reasons. But, you know, God forbid if something happens to your spouse that drives, you should know how to drive that thing. Right. So I felt so in control. And on this video that I did, people, a few people commented um, in the Class A uh, video that I was like all over the place with the steering wheel. And I remember we were driving through Alabama and the roads were a little rough when we you filmed that. Mm-hmm. And that's just how it drove. It wasn't me. There was so much play and so much give in the Class A and maybe, and it was a gas model, like maybe it was just our model. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But that's just how it drove and you had to kind of go with that. And, and I always and, felt in control though. D- yeah, but right? I, compared to, you no, and I just different. kept saying there and back, down to Florida and back, like... I just felt like I was driving my car yeah. and, you know, very aware we had 40 feet behind us of a vehicle, but th- man, that thing drove so well. Yeah. Like I smooth. felt it was so smooth <clears throat> and there was times I remember in the class say, honestly, and I don't do the 70 that they'll say through, um, I forget if it's Virginia or West, I think it's West Virginia has pretty high speed limit. So does Georgia. So does South Carolina. But that's not the curves and yeah, all that. No, no, and there no. was times when we used to drive the class A through that part that it was, it was hairy. Yeah. You know, it was scary yeah. stuff and you just slow way down and go like, okay, this is going to be 60 and that's it. But, and I really stayed around. I think you don't need to go over 65 anyway with, especially with the, the, the trailer because right. you don't want, I know about the tires and you yeah. need to be a little bit more diligent about that. But I just felt like I didn't have those moments of oh crap yeah. that we did in the class A like ever no. so I was so pleased beyond words and so I was also feeling after driving through the snow so A it was more in control anyway but through the snow and all of that I'm like okay we can do more we're trying to like flip our trips around to be more in the winter time and um, that means we need to drive further if we want to go somewhere warm so we're driving through some snow and I just felt really confident about like more confident I guess than I was I wouldn't have done it before I would have done no. the class A no I think this was it was just a total different ride like there's many things I loved about driving the class A when you were um you know there was a couple times where there was a ton of rain and you just slowed down and yeah. I was watching cars like much smaller than us hydroplaning and we were so far off the ground that we just went through it all right. that right. was like nice that was nice about the class a and i think the truck has that kind of lift package too and i think that's what the problem uh with our the the seven way for us it should never have come out but our truck has a it must be where the axle is it's an eight foot bed where the the hitch is right. and also it's got a lift on it too so it must have made everything so when you make a turn too much it would that just it would just right unplug. Out. it was so frustrating but, so I, I super recommend putting a, if you are pulling a fifth wheel. With an extra long bed. With an extra, or just any time, I would absolutely put a in-bed uh, outlet just to play it safe. Yeah, Because definitely. even making turns, I was, it was good. Everything was good. Uh, I would say another thing that I love too about 
just, you know, first impressions driving on out. And we had talked about this is, you know, we've always driven now these gas models. Well, now we're in a diesel because our truck's a diesel. So one thing we love because we had time. Now, we, we on this trip and most trips we go on, really, except when we've gone up to, um, you know, like Maine, when there was smaller pull-offs for yeah. getting gas. But yeah. for getting gas and we needed diesel... What was so great about it is uh, we could pull into any truck lane. Now, we've always used Pilot. You know, we've used the Pilot app or um, uh, Flying J's app that gets us to where we need to get to get the gas filled up before for the Class mm-hmm. A and all of that. But that's not always convenient. There's not mm-hmm. always one coming up and you're down to like a quarter tank and you no. need to get something quick. But um, what was really nice is like really it was so easy to just pull in with this big long thing into the trucker lanes and get your diesel do what you got to do and get on your way like we still use the different apps for gas and we would just look ahead and see what was coming up um mostly because we'd be looking for all right what food stops and right because there's we, a lot of things we're we, talking you kind about. of bu- put it all together we would well, bundle there, our there stuff was, we had to think about the thing the biggest you know we had a lot of pros here as far as what we loved about like i definitely still to me after this that whole trip I am the happiest that I've been with any of the RVs with this model. Yeah. With having a fifth wheel with a truck, I love. There's so many pros that we'll get to, all of them. But one of them um, was the gas. Like, it just was such an easy thing. Because there's times we pulled off for for regular gas, and it's at a highway stop, yeah. and it's for cars. Yeah. You guys know what I'm saying. Everybody sure I'm who's has about. a gas model has gone through this. And you just got to keep going. You yeah. pull in you and you're like, that out. ain't happening. But then um, if you look in this, the highway ones, there's always like a diesel spot for it too. So that's what we And we'd be like, oh, on. I wish we could go there. And now we can. And what I liked about the diesel stops was we could just stop. The nozzle itself is a little bigger, so the gas comes out a lot quicker. You got to watch that. Also, they sold DEF, the I don't think diesel I knew that. emission fluid, uh, at the pump. So there's a couple times. So that's something else new to us. Yeah. So we were. It went low, and Do I you want to explain it that to we everybody because, like, I, I know as I for me, I wouldn't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, diesel emission fluid is uh, there was a, and I'm not sure about the year, but I think it was like 2012, 12, thir- I think 12 or 13. Said. There was an upgrade in um, diesel engines. So remember the old school bus smell that you get the diesel smell. There's now diesel emission fluid prevents that it it runs in conjunction with the engine to eliminate the emission to make sure it doesn't smell toxic or nauseous so it's uh and the engine won't run if there's no fluid in it so it's kind of like it's so got to a me it's kind of like remembering to have windshield washer fluid and Correct. that's something you always got to remember to have and you, so you don't always have it in on the road with you and so it was nice that they had yeah. these at the truck stops because people need that. Went so to the truck stop, filled it the up. The car kind of lets you know fantastic. when you need. Yeah. yeah, it just sort of lets you know. So you don't know, and you should always have it probably in your vehicle. But and if you go didn't. to like a regular gas station, like I go to fill the truck up locally, the the nozzle is smaller, so it actually takes probably say I'm just making numbers up like ten minutes, but at the truck stop it took three. Like yeah, it was like, like fill up, go. fill up and get out of there. Yeah. So it was kind of nice. So definitely there were so many pros and cons. So driving down. So the cons would be, uh, I guess how we got started, but we learned again, as most trips, things happen to help. We had a lot of, uh, big learning curve on this trip cause we haven't done a big trip. Yeah, in this not like before. No. We just did a weekend that was 45 minutes away. Uh, and we learned a lot on that yeah. trip. Um, that's when we started learning how the, um, the plug would pop out. Yeah. Oh, that's right. So that we was, probably that drove 40 minutes <laughs> yeah. locally without the plug. We, we, we learned about that then too. Yeah. Um, but on this trip, um, we learned we could drive in snow. We yep. learned that you really do need to brush off, um, you know, when you don't have awning covers. I am putting I a push think they're, broom they're into They're definitely the worth the investment. Yeah. It's just not something we want to invest in right now. Actually, I was talking to somebody. Uh, awning covers are great for class A's and C's. Because of the size of the the um, yeah. the size of the slide, but a lot of people don't do it for uh, fifth wheels just because of the um, like stuff can get underneath it still. Okay. So it, and the way that they're made, it just it's it's just not the same kind it, of setup. It isn't like a industry standard like you would see on class A's and C's. Yeah. But so I think it's something to do. Uh, I don't know if I, I read it somewhere that it was just a an. It's just not a standard because it's easier to clean up. A lot of the slides, you can actually walk on them, Yeah, which was kind of nice because I was standing on right. them. I would never stand on our A's. Two reasons. The awning was in the way. 
and right. the other thing, I don't think it would be as strong. So this, the, at least in the fifth wheel, the, the the models are totally different than what we're used to. So the trailer's made to just be pulled and do and leave in places, and yet it was able to. It's it's just got stronger slides to it. I felt safer standing on it. And, yeah. And everything. Well, that's good to know. I didn't know about that. Yeah. Because I thought, is that something we want to upgrade later? And yeah, I, I don't you know. don't really because it was something trailer. that was nice about an egg. Yeah. But, but if you, you go to an RV park, you'd you still have it. to go up and sweep off. Yeah. Like especially when we're down in Florida, you got these big pine needles. I don't know if you guys have ever stayed, um, especially in Fort Wilderness. We've stayed there lots every day. There's these big pine needles. All uh, you know, like they were huge, yeah. and you'd have to make sure you still have to like check it, even if you've got the slide covers. But it's different, so you really have to get up there and do that. So that's just something. Okay, we learned that you need to do that. Definitely a, a pro was the ability to get gas at the diesels mm-hmm. uh, through the trucker huge. lane. Um, the uh, the only challenge, and we knew this going into it, was going to be, and we only had two of our kids on this trip, and then we met one down there who lives down in Florida, was, and our dog, was huge. This was like our biggest thing getting into this, going from an yeah, A knew, to a... we knew this was going to be a deal. And that's, you got to stay in the truck. And yeah. um, that's the, you know, we've always felt, well, that's just safer anyway than us. God forbid if, you know, we were just so fortunate, I think, in, in all the years we had in, uh, a C or an A, that nobody we didn't have an accident nobody got hurt and not to say that you can't get hurt in an accident in the in the truck but we were all belted in and we were all in the truck and that to me just felt safer you know mm-hmm. i just finally felt mm-hmm. a little safer than it was just the driver and the passenger that really were belted in those seat belts and those things i'm sorry you know like you're sitting at the table and you're attached to a piece of wood and you're putting like i just don't feel like those were safe anyway so there was a big i, I can't even talk about what could have happened i don't want to <laughs> it's too it's too upsetting well and then that makes but, it as the driver you try to be super 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 cautious well, because you know you have precious cargo in the back and the same goes for normal. in the truck as well but still it's just a little different you kind of look behind you say a little prayer and you go the pros to that God forbid, you know, God willing, there wouldn't be an accident. But the pros were everybody could spread out. They could sleep. It was much more comfortable to travel, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Barring there was no no incident. Um, but this, it was so we had our 14 and our 17-year-old and our dog. And the thing about the the what we have with the F-350, it's huge. Six adults can sit in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the back seats, they're upright. You know, you can't lean back. And But they, they did not complain once. No, those two were great. They were great. They brought a couple of pillows. We learned they they scaled it down pretty quick to what they brought in because we brought snacks and things like that. But we had the fridge going with the inverter and all that in the back. So well, that's an issue. That's another story that we'll get to in a minute of what <laughs> things we learned on this trip. But, you know, all of our things that we brought with us, what we needed. Like at first we had coats because it got cold. And so we scaled it down as we kept stopping and traveling on our way down. But, um, you know, it wasn't as comfortable of a drive, you know, but the dog loved it. The dog was sitting up front oh, in between us. She had a great time. Because there's, there's a full adult size seat in between. So she was just like queen of the car, the truck. But the kids were great. Like, you know, and they're past that age of, he's touching me. No, da, da, da. No. You know, so we didn't have any of that. I mean, it started out, every they, they had pillows, blankets, books, bags, all this stuff. And then at the end of it, they were just having like uh, maybe a pillow. A couple pillows. Or their, ba- their books. And their phones. And that was and, about yeah, it. hardly anything. Yeah. And same with us up front. Yeah. We had to deal. We but I also brought a little dog bowl with water. Yeah. And that I could keep giving her a little water. and like, She drinks out of a cup, too. So. Yeah, but I brought her bowl. <laughs> yes. And I brought some cookie bones and little things like that. So yeah. she was totally comfortable on the way down. It was like we had spoon fed her. Um, but so that was a, definitely a learning curve. But nobody complained. It was fine. And, and again... As I don't mean to keep going over this. It's safer. Yeah. So that was really cool. So, but um, that worked out really, really. But we well. did utilize. We'll talk about the incident on the way back after the trip. But we did utilize because um, that happened on the way home. So we'll mm. we'll discuss the trip first, and we'll talk about our oh, lovely that. drive home. Um, mm. So, I would say, you know, we still use the RV. Like when we stopped. We use, I prefer to use that bathroom, not to be a snob, but I don't love going to the gas station bathroom, especially as a woman. They're nasty. So we used, like, all of us would go, all right, you know, Neil would be filling up the, the gas and we would go back and get some cold drinks because the fridge was going and we'd use the bathroom, mm-hmm. you know, do get get what you got to get and then get back in the truck and go. So it worked. Like, we still used it on the way down. Yeah. Um, we didn't, another thing we had to think about was 
we don't have a generator. So again, in thinking about things that we've lost and what we've had to adjust to when we were, when we'd stop, we always would stop. We usually stop somewhere around um, Georgia and uh, oh, always in a Cracker Barrel. Yeah, and when we had the Class A, that's what we used to do, mm-hmm. and we would aim for the you know one or two that we've used before that we felt comfortable in and that felt safe in. Well, we knew this time this beast is longer than what we've driven before, mm-hmm. and it couldn't accommodate us very well. Mm-mm. And we don't have a generator in the fifth wheel. I mean, I'm sorry, in the Class A we did. Mm -hmm. And so we could make coffee in the morning. We could do some things. We would go in and have breakfast at the Cracker Barrel just as a thank you to letting us sleep for free. Or we could let the generator run all night so we could have air conditioning because a few times we'd go in July and it would be 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So we were able to run the air. And here in this one, you can't. It's just no generator. So an upgrade would be... Boondogging does not work You would lose out on space... Um, but you could put a generator in it. We've chosen not to for costs, um, and as often as we would use it, and we don't tend to boondock no. that all, except for this kind of thing when we're driving somewhere and stopping. So we decided on the way down and the way back we were going to book. We became members of KOA mm-hmm. and got the gold card or whatever. whatever. And uh, we have a KOA you know, membership. Yeah, yeah. And actually, it saved us a ton. It more than paid for itself already. Mm-hmm. And we ended up heading for. Um, I just googled. Like, all right, let's try to drive somewhere 14 to 16 hours. Where does that take us? And I found Point South KOA, and that was in South Carolina. Yeah, Yamasi near Paris Island. Yeah, Yamasi or Yamasi. I can't, expl- We're probably I can't not pronounce it. it right. I apologize, Point anyway, South, but. We put that out. A lot of people have stayed there that, yeah, it's that great. like our page. And they're like, we go there all the time. In fact, I was dying because this one lady wrote, um, did you guys just drive in late last night? Because again, we started, remember, two hours later than planned, so we didn't get there till 10. Yeah. And they were totally accommodating. They yep. had everything ready for us when we got there that we could just get our spot, and it was pitch black. So I'm, when people that were in the spot next to us woke up, they're like, when did these people get here? So hopefully we came in like stealth like and were That's, quiet. The goal was to be, you know, the diesel truck, it was super quiet. I don't want to wake people up and be rude. So we, we did make it by 10, and I know quiet hours are like 10 or 11, but. Um, they woke up. So this lady uh, responded. She goes, are you guys in this grand design solitude? Like, I think you're next to us. I'm like, get out. Turned out this lady was in the same loop as us at Disney mm-hmm. last year. Oh, that was crazy. So we, you know, so we we're joking around and they were heading down to Florida as well as us. They were actually going to be going to stay in St. Augustine. And uh, I'm like, well, we'll probably see you there. I feel like this couple, we keep seeing them. We keep seeing them a bit. Anyway, um, I think her name was Kim. And uh, that was a riot. But the place was fantastic. It was actually, we didn't even know what it looked like till we woke no. up in the morning. It was pitch black. But when we woke up in the morning, it was a beautiful spot. It was nice. One that I would stay in. Under trees. It was very, uh, the, the, we, did, we do pull-throws, especially with this. We try, especially at nighttime. Especially for We stuff. do not need to back in nope. the night. It takes forever. People would be mad. So yeah. um, <clears throat> if you've seen the video, it took me 13 minutes. Yeah, go check out on YouTube. Yeah. It hasn't gotten that much better. <laughs> <laughs> we, got thought a little we, bit. we thought we're not no no when we ended up well we'll get to this in a second but when we got to beverly beach that was a whole other video well that was nuts so oh, yeah. but so but it was a lovely it stay. was great so then we were able to we were sleep well, over yeah we were rested use the air conditioning get up in the morning i went and got coffee. gas everybody took showers yeah another pro to i mean honestly another pro to having the fifth wheel is like we unhooked so Neil was able to, we're all getting ready in the morning, showering and just freshening up. Because I think we had about four, we were going down to Beverly Beach, which is Flagler. Um, so it's sort of nor- about 20 minutes north of Daytona. So it was about um, a three and a half hour drive from there. But it's still a drive, like after we did all that from New York the day mm-hmm. before. We were tired, even though we had a good night's sleep and we had a good breakfast and everything. Um, oh, that was the other thing I was going to mention too, on the way down, something we, we did we weren't able to cook and do the things we're normally able to do mm. as far as driving on the way down. Because right. we would turn the generator on and use the microwave, right. things like that. So when we were pulling into gas stations, one of the things we were looking for, a lot of the truck stops had places that you could at least go get some... Subways and Subway and, and, you know, things like that. like that. So we had to think about that as well, just an aside. So, but anyway, in the morning we had a nice breakfast, a coffee, everybody freshened up, yep. ready to go. Felt good, got But ready. Neil was able to, like, while we're getting ready, take the truck, leave the RV, and, like, go... You know, rather than, you know, you've been in some small towns when we pulled off trying to find a gas station, even in those, mm-hmm. you know, so you could just take your truck anywhere yeah. and then come back and get us. We hooked up again and we headed on our way and we made it to um, Beverly Beach 
Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. We yeah. got there by noon, so it was a little earlier, but they let us in. Mm-hmm. We got a great, They're always accommodating. They're always... So, highly recommend. We've done it a few times before. We interviewed them last year, so if you went back on an old podcast, I couldn't tell you the number offhand. No. But we met um, one of the owners. Her name is Toral. It's family-owned, and it's called Beverly Beach Camp Town, and it is fantastic. Now, last... Uh, was it October? They had been hit with uh, Hurricane Matthew. Yeah. And there was a lot of damage to that was Flagler two, and, and Beverly Beach. It was um, not great. They had, And you can see some of the piers were like pulled away when we drove in there well, we were houses them. that were gone we knew that they got hit last year and we were just get, sending out good wishes to them because they that's our kids happened to be down in florida our kids were in orlando at the time at the time and so was you know visiting and also there for a track meet i were a cross-country meet and uh but to their credit at beverly beach with all the devastation that was around still they rebuilt that place the uh, camp, the everything looks fantastic. Yeah, they really. You know, you wouldn't know that there was a problem. Yeah, so um, but they're but just great, great owners, very friendly. Yeah. They're very accommodating. We've got a great spot. Again, right I, to me, it, like I know it's it's not an, a cheap place to go to. You know, no. it's on but the, the higher end. But the view's fantastic. But you, the view is what you're paying for. Yeah. I mean, and then you've got full hookups, and you're right on the beach. Right out the back window. Was so the we, ocean. what was nice was when we were there before in our class A, we pulled straight in, so the view was out the front window. With the the fifth wheel, we back in. We we were lucky to have not all fifth wheels have at the back the window, mm-hmm. and that's our living area. I mean, that was our view and all the slide outs. What I love about the fifth wheel is all the windows. Yeah, there's a lot we, of glass. We just didn't have that in the A. There's a few windows, and even in the diesel models, you see this. It's very dark. Mm-hmm. And what I love about, and I'm sure travel trailers are the same way, but with the fifth wheels, like our slide outs have windows on all three sides. Mm-hmm. And then we had this big window at the back, plus windows on either side, plus, plus, plus. So it was just natural light. Our view every day was just looking out there at this beach. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was nice. so, like the sunrises that we'd see were amazing. And um, I had a few people, I, I recorded it and put that on sort of a time lapse. Please check that out too on YouTube. Um, and it's just a beautiful thing. If you're having a bad day, just throw that on and watch the sunrise. And I had a few people from California going, oh, thanks. We never get to see that. We've got great <laughs> sunsets, but we don't see it on the east. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, so it was just amazing. And the whole week was just um, when we've stayed at Beverly Beach before, we were there for like a day or two. And we would head on down to, it was just sort of an add-on for us. Mm-hmm. So for this to be our destination, we had a chance to go through the town and the towns are like we went all the way to Daytona and just explored we were from Daytona all the way up to St. Augustine and then we just spent the week exploring yeah I mean usually Shopping, when we eating. go it's just stay two days on the beach we're out we never really leave camp we didn't town. have time to like leave and yeah. now we went to some amazing restaurants we went to a really nice gallery that had uh, more beachy like uh, art Art. It's like the beach gallery, yeah. art gallery, yeah. We went to Publix. <laughs> we went yeah. to St. Augustine. We were able to explore. We went just on a car ride and hit Daytona and got to see all that. And really, I think Hurricane Matthew, when it not to be gloom and doom, but I think it was really pretty bad. Yeah. That that area, but they've really rebuilt it up. It was... Yeah, I think it just nice. if you live on any coastline, you just are a resilient person. Totally, and yeah. Like what we, you know, people think we're nuts with our snowstorms. It just melts and we go on. Yeah. There isn't like this devastation. Yeah, the house doesn't get blown away. Not too often. No. And to see what's happened, like, you know, our days were just so rough there. Basically, we get up, have our coffee, breakfast, whatever, go for our morning walk up and down the beach. Like we put so many steps on our... Oh, it was crazy. Uh, on our... Um, what are Fitbits. these called? Fitbits. 28,000. Yeah, like just every every day should start with a walk on the beach. That's what oh I think. Oh my God, that would be perfect. So it was just a no-brainer, um, you know, and I the shelling, you know, that was a big thing of the day. Which shell do you like? Should we keep this one or this one? I end up turning them into my art shop. I ended up, I'm selling a bunch of necklaces that have the shells that we picked. And that turned out beautifully. Yeah, they you, came out really they nice. They came out really nice. So we found some beautiful... I mean, to be on that side of the... You know, usually on the Gulf side, you'd find it's a calmer mm-hmm. um, ocean. Uh, and so you'd find just more shells. But I've we've usually gone shelling and not gotten such... We had really good shells on yeah, this one. Yeah, they were great. Because they really they get crushed with all the waves and all that. Because it's, it's rougher, I think, on the it's East Coast. It's a lot rougher on the ocean. So we... Um, yeah, I said, oh, shit, I meant golf side versus ocean. Um, but we did shelling. We'd have lunch. We'd decide where we're going to go for dinner. we cook some dinners. But I also, it's a vacation for me, too, and I'm the one that cooks. So 
Um, if Neil cooked, we'd have hot dogs and eggs every day. So. And let's just say they're fantastic. No. You've not tried my hot dogs. I don't and eggs. want to. They are quite or good. Or taco meat and eggs is another favorite of Neil's. Pretty much anything with leftover eggs. with eggs is a meal to me. Doesn't any a leftover meal meat Neil, with eggs right. is very good. So, what were your highlights? What did you love about um, Beverly Beach? Like the I, I, whole trip? Well, what did you? I enjoyed see? being on the beach and just the relaxing part of it because but like we if would, somebody said, "Where would I like destinations? What things do you think they St. should Augustine check out?" St. Augustine was very cool. What did you like about it? I like the. Well, we took it to. The, well, I like the the like um the town. The, the town. They had the fort, and then they had like a I don't even know what like a shopping center, but it was a pedestrian where you can walk through the different shops. Mm-hmm. And they a lot of the buildings there was like the first school that they'd converted into some other stuff. So they were very much old Spanish style buildings that was a shopping center. So I bought a cool hat. We had a really really good lunch. And Neil um, finally learned that when you're bald, you really can like burn your head so <laughs> I didn't get burned this year I didn't get burned this year you learned no nope. usually he burns himself on every, every year and peels and burns and peels it's yeah, ridiculous yeah good for skin cancer yeah that's great right. yeah I'm, I'm, um, I'm, but yeah the shopping was really great we ended up doing uh, one of the trolley tours which I love to find any city we've gone to I if they have a duck boat or a double decker boat any of these and it was a hop on hop off so it stopped at like seventeen or eighteen different destinations. You get like a tourist. The 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 guide was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I think you're as lucky as your guide. Yeah, how good your guide is. But we've always gotten pretty lucky. And any town city we've gone to that has those kind of tours from New York to Ottawa. To anywhere we've gone, we will Quebec, like any of them, we've done these tours because they always have a history lesson with it. And if we can, I mean, it's not just for our kids. I like to learn this stuff too. I mean, we learned about as early, you know, what the Spanish influence was going into St. Augustine's, like that history um, to, I mean, it's just so old there, like 1600s and like it's oh, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's the first settlement basically. Yeah. Yeah, I remember back when we had gone. Uh, I just don't was, retain it, but I learn it no, at the time, it and great. I go, "Wow, it's fascinating." And then it's gone. <laughs> These tour guides are fascinating, though, because when we went to Quebec City one time, we uh, the, we got to talk to the tour guide, and he was a retired uh, like um, like uh, what's it called electrical worker, uh, worked on the power grids, and then went and took classes in history to be able to do the tour guide. So he actually had like these guys go and they learn their history. It's not like they're just like hearing stories from one to the next. These are guys who take time to learn the history of the area, to really get to know it and love it, and then they pass it on. And, and I we, thought the guy in St. Augustine was great. We have one of those kids who's going to, for school to be a teacher and teach history. And there is a certain mind that, like I said, I can hear this all day long and be captivated and interested and listen. And it, maybe remnants of it are there, but you have to be able to retain that yeah. stuff. I mean, it's just... You have to love it. All, you have to love it. And so we, we had a great guide. And... Um, it was just a beautiful day. The weather when we went was perfect. It was, perfect. It was um, oh, it, a little chilly at night when we first got there, but it warmed up as the week went on. Oh, but we did like learn something 70s, about... 70s, it was great. Weather what? related, it, two things. Number one, it's an ocean, so there's going to be wind. We got used to that real quick, though, I Not, think. Never a good hair day in no, Florida. But that's okay. Anyway, in Florida with the humidity, I never have a good... You don't have hair, so you don't care. I loved it. I and have hair. I care. The other thing is... What we've never experienced is we when we got there, the first day was like good. Then the full moon came and the tide oh, yeah. changed quite a bit. So the first w- day we went, not knowing about the tide with the full moon and everything, tons of jellies on the jellyfish on the beach. And then as like the next day when the full moon went out, no jellyfish on the beach. It was kind of crazy. Like well, there was a couple of days. There was a lot more of um, it's not seaweed. It's like the kelp. And in the kelp, there would be the jellyfish. So we'd be out in our morning walks. You'd really have to watch and wait till the tide rolled to the place that you could safely walk. Yeah. And yes, you could wear um, those water shoes that I don't have or I hate them. So I like to be barefoot on the beach. So we would just wait because we had nowhere to go. Yeah. And, Which is uh, awesome. We'd go for the walk, but it really was affected by that. And we were like, "Wow, what a! How come they don't come and clean up all this kelp? Because it kind of... And I know at times we ended up looking it up because you have time on a trip to look at things like that. But why is there so much kelp at times? And it, like Neil said, had to, a lot to do with the, the full moon and that affects the tides um, and what comes in. But then you have a different appreciation for when you realize what it feeds. Yes, like it within that kelp is a lot of nutrients and things for. The birds and the crabs and, you know, so they, Florida leaves it alone and lets it handle, and there's areas, I I forget, I forget where it was, 
in Florida, they had a real, it was, I think, down by Naples or something at one point. Oh, there's that a big came up. bloom. There was a huge thing that happened right. after, and it lasted for weeks. And they tried cleaning it up, and it's right there the next day. And it really was, you just, because uh, I guess the smell can get horrible. Yeah, and I, as it decomposes. But that also was something that the, um, the Army Corps of Engineers diverted some water as well. So it affected, it, that. it affected that. So it affected the cleanup of uh, what would naturally occur by pulling it out to the ocean with yeah. their, out to the Gulf. So that was something they had to But when to you really think how it's a food source for many, then you yeah. go, oh, okay. Mm. You know, obviously that's good. Just don't step on anything that looks pretty like blue and, and silver. And tentacly. <laughs> yeah, just that way. So, and we, but we saw it like it was always an adventure going for our beach walks. There yeah. were some guys fishing that found a hammerhead, a baby hammerhead shark. I got pictures of that on Facebook. Just like on a walk, you had to bring your phone with you. To, oh, we yeah. used the phone as a camera. Because we'd missed something. There were these birds that reminded me of the seagulls in uh, Finding Nemo that say, mine, mine, yep, mine. Yep. And they were doing some weird talking to each other. Like you just, because you have the time. This is what's so great about vacation. You have to make the time for vacation. You just stop and you smell the flowers and you look around. Like when would we ever stop and like watch? There was this power struggle going on between these really odd looking birds. Yeah, they didn't. They were, look, I can't right. even tell you what they were. I think I put a picture on there going, does anybody know what these are? Yeah. Um, but they had they were just the funniest, it's wackiest. A variation birds. of a seagull. Yeah, but, but they were so weird looking. And that's what I find with like our RVing trips is like especially this one, a lot of times when we've gone places we've gone to experience as much as you possibly can as run, run, run. On this trip it was all slowed down. That was totally intentional. We needed totally it to slow down. And we the kids loved it. Yeah. I think they had a great time. There was no like are we going home soon kind of inch they just loved it. Yeah. You know, and I know for myself, my mental health was I good. I think as we get older, our trips are getting a little more chill. That's okay. <laughs> when the kids were younger, we just wanted them to see so much and do yeah. so much. And now we all just, we all have busy lives. And so we want to chill. And I think they appreciate that now. Yeah, they enjoy the chilling. But out. I love that they'll still, like we got them each, the two of them that came, uh, Connor and Olivia, they each wanted one of those boogie boards. So we got them boogie boards. Like I love that they still, at 14 and 17, like one's graduating high school in a couple yeah. weeks. And so that's number three. And, um, you know, they still play, you yeah, know, they play. like they were, we were, ma- we all were doing this. We're all making sandcastles and, you know, we all got in on that. We would throw around a ball. We would, they'd go in the ocean, whatever. Like it just was time to just play. And then of course we did our sightseeing yep. and did some like, you know, sitting on the beach every day is great, but I want to go do some stuff too right. and walk around and learn. So I think, um, you know, you could take full advantage of all of that when you find locations like that. You know, we're able to be an hour and a half away from Disney. And a cool thing about the Disney trip, A, it only cost us our points from the the chase card, our food, our tickets, and everything, which so that was like such a bonus. And we added that on well, last minute. We had a lot minute. of points, but that was good. We did, but it was such a great extra, you know, for us to be able to do that. But we had our dog with us on this. So normally when we go to Disney, we stay at Disney and we just come and go with the dog and check on the dog and go Mm -hmm. take her out and blah, blah, blah. So we thought, what are we going to do? And we've always seen um, Best Friends on the property, which is uh, for, it's a... Used to be called Camp Bow Wow. Camp Bow Wow. Now it's called Best Friends. And our dog, who is 13, also 91 in people years, has never, ever had to stay because we've always had an RV and we've always taken her with us. Mm-hmm. So we didn't know how she would handle this, especially at 13. So we, she's never done any kind of daycare nothing. Yeah, either she's been at my mom and dad's, when that's a long time ago, or she's been with us. So, But we had to because she couldn't be left alone that long. So we called ahead. I thought it was very, they were very nice. Very nice. Very affordable. And she had a... a what was it, like 30 it's like box 34 or 38 and she had a private room because she's not one to socialize she with others. She thinks she's human so yeah. she doesn't know she's she doesn't like to be with dogs for and too long. I paid an extra ten dollars for cuddle time and yes. somebody went in there and hung out with her. Throughout the day. Yeah. She was so happy. It's a clean facility. Of course it's on Disney. They're not going to do it any less. Mm-hmm. It's well run. I think it's a chain but they've they're taking care of this one at Disney for them. And it opens when the parks open and it closes when the parks are closed. An hour after. An hour after so, so you, you can, can get, get your dog. Yeah. But we were done by eight yeah, or we so. Yeah, we've been there a few times. We've been there a few times. Didn't need to stay for the fireworks. It was okay. And, um, and still we, had an hour and a half to drive back. So. Yeah, and we still had an hour and a half to drive And she was just happy. And yeah, just she, she came back. Good. I thought she'd look at us like, how could you? Yeah. But she didn't. She was like, oh, yeah, that was fun. And you yeah. could get her... Um, 
They also do grooming. Mm-hmm. She had just been groomed a couple what, a day or a couple days before. So she was good, but you know, I would if we were staying off property, mm-hmm. I would definitely use it again. Absolutely, if, you yeah. know, if if it needs. So that worked out really well with the dog because that was the only other issue. Was like, all right, what do we do? Because we can't leave her that long. Oh, so going back because we mentioned it in the beginning about my backing up. Oh yeah. So I just wanted to make sure that we're clear on this. <laughs> so when we first did it, I actually think I did it half as quick as I did before. And the problem I had with this backing up is I was trying to listen to too many people. And I think what you really, and you guys who do this all the time know this. Or gals. Or gals. You, I do not. Guys mean. I, I know, but I don't do it. Mixed. Yes. But I think if you folks. do it, you folks do it on a regular basis. You listen to one person, and I was listening to a few people. And I think once I looked at where I had to put it, I did it way quicker. And I should always listen to where Kathy says it to go because that's where we have a um, a relationship because she's always been my spotter when we back up. Yeah, Connor, God bless him, got involved, um, our son that was with us. And so he was telling he wasn't understanding because you know how you have to do the opposite. You go the opposite way of which way you're trying to go. He didn't have that in his head, so I'm telling you one thing, he's telling you another. It was too too many too many people involved. Too many chefs, and he yeah. can also um, back a trailer up, no problem himself. So he was giving me trailer advice, but fifth wheel and truck advice is different. So I figured it out. We figured it out. It know, was but done everybody half the time. We were but one guy walked up to me <laughs> and he goes, "This this nice older man." He looks at me and goes, "You're on Florida time now. Take as much time as you want." And I was like, "Okay, that was." Quick, quickly, either he was being sarcastic, do this quick, or I'm but you on were vacation. listening. I felt like you weren't listening to me, and I felt like you were hearing Connor because he was up in your ear. And so I would tell you something I didn't know. He's telling you stuff. It was getting really frustrating. It was frustrating. I, was, I think the three. Of I was us just like, oh my goodness, like because I would tell you guys to do one thing, and then I don't think Connor relayed that to you. And then it'd be the opposite, and it just went back and forth, back and forth. It was crazy. But we did it. You know, by that point, you've been driving two days, we're tired, and it's just like, ugh, I just want to be at the beach. And you still got to set up. And to set the record straight, I have now backed the trailer in five times. Yeah. So So you're doing pretty good. Yeah, for five times. I'm hoping every time gets a little easier. Then, of course, while we're going to uh, getting ready and unhooking, this guy pulls in with his... Zoom, zoom. He's in 30 seconds. I know. just like, oh, my God. Someday we'll be at that. Yeah, but we're not there yet. Um, so, so the trip, I think, overall was a total was success. Fantastic. We yep. did some of our own cooking. Love the fifth wheel. We, you know, utilized the truck to, you know, this is, again, the great thing. Now, we've, when we had the Class A, we did have a hookup for a little bit on a couple of the trips. That was great. But we brought a car. We brought a car with us. So, But it's just nice to be able to take the truck and just go. Yeah. And, of course, the dog's happy. Dogs, and that's her second home, so she loves it. And, um, you know, we did, like, some great eating out. We did some fun shopping. But this was supposed to be a pretty inexpensive, um, it was a simple trip. trip. Just a chill. simple, yeah. We went to some great restaurants. We liked um, the Anchor. Mm-hmm. was very good. Where mm-hmm. else did we go? Flagler Fish Company. When we were in St. Augustine, we went to the Floridian. Fabulous food. I think Neil sampled, because there's a real, um, <laughs> almost a Creole, Southern Creole flair to the food there. And I think you sampled, um, what was it you kept getting? I had shrimp and grits in three different restaurants. And and then I had it one time. So you had four different shrimp and grits. And they were all different. They were all different. Yeah. And all delicious. All delicious. Yeah. But um, But all different. No no, no two were the same. Rich, I'll tell you. The food was rich, but we walked enough that we didn't actually gain any weight. So that was pretty good. But we had some great food and just really good times. And Beverly Beach Camp Town again, two thumbs up. That was an amazing, amazing trip. Um, so coming home, sadly, we had to say goodbye. Ian was only with us for a few days in the beginning. And he has to work. He uh, left that night. He took his car when we went to Disney, and he lives 20 minutes from there. So he just went home from there and had to work. So that was fast. Like, it was like we only had him Saturday to Tuesday, and then, and then he was gone. It was kind of a bummer. But um, I was just glad he was able to see us. Yeah, so, that was so nice. we at least got him in. He's coming up this way um, soon, actually, so that's good. But, um, you know, we had a good time, and it's changing. Every trip is different. We have different kids on it. This was the last trip that Connor will go with us on Easter vacation. Yes. He will be in college in the fall, and he'll be like Mitchell, who didn't get to go on this trip. 
who was home and I mean, it just feels so awful. Like he's home and doing school and he's busy and everything, but he were posting all these pictures and he's like, Hey, yeah. <laughs> what about me? Same. I don't know if he cared so much. He did a little bit, but he doesn't love a beach. So it was, okay. no, he doesn't love a beach. He doesn't love a beach, but he was, I think a little yeah. envious of the, the Disney thing. It's okay. They it actually even went I'm... up and looked at their schedule moving forward for a couple of years. That'll yeah. There was one trip last year that for whatever reason, the planets aligned and um, Mitchell's college schedule worked out with the two high schoolers schedule. Ian's never, when he was in college, and Ian never was, went. No, and Ian was down there and we actually all got to go on, like any, to me it's all like borrowed time and stealing time, whenever we can all get together. Yeah. And um, last year, so Ian had just moved and we were able to all five of us go down and meet with him. So all six of us got to be together last Easter break. That will never happen again. No. Like it no. just, I looked at sort of when Easter was and I know when Olivia gets her breaks from high school and they just don't, and I know where, you know, obviously where Connor and Mitchell are going to school, it just will never line up again. Um, so we take the time and like we said, we're trying to change our schedules up a little bit. It's going to be more, you know, the kids are off school from colleges up this way, um, mid December to almost the end of January. So we're trying to turn things and with my shop. Now, the busy season is pretty much uh, May through December, so I got to work, you know, and I've got to do what I got to do to make that business go. So it works really, really well that we actually do a, most of our long distance traveling between December mm -hmm. and um, April and May, and that's that's what will work and it also will work for the kids schedule on those trips that they can go yeah, on. They can do that. So that's sort of a thing that's starting a trend that's going to start happening in our family. And then, then it all changes because Mitchell will be done college and then Connor will be done college and someday Olivia will be done college. And then Kathy and I will be going on our own. And, and we'll be starting to do more of those trips too. When, especially different. when Olivia graduates high school, that we want some more of us time and we love going with our kids, but oh, we also absolutely. have to think about, there's us life as a couple after kids that, too. Yeah, yeah, that we need to find time for the two of us to get away. And we'll be RVing, and we're also going to be going over to Europe, and we've got other big pl travel plans. Um, but the the next part, I just, the drive home, I, I guess we should say this the drive home was interesting. We have one funny story to tell you. Um, and uh, I think maybe we'll leave the, the whole discussion. I think we could do a whole other show talking about how the local stuff that we're going to be, that we've been doing. And that yeah, we're we'll do be that. Doing. Yeah. But I think that's the second yeah, show. Yeah, that's the second show. But the drive home, Neil. Yeah, was, that was an interesting that drive That was home. an interesting drive home. So we were driving home. It was fine. We left right out. Like we said, everything is going good. We there was sand on everything, though. Can I tell you, everywhere. after a week there, it yeah. was like in my nose, in my ears. Sand There was a light everything. layer on the truck and the RV, yep, yep. and it was everywhere. A sand and salt. Yes. So beach salt. So it yeah. was, which was great. It was kind of a great thing. Yeah, it actually. was great. So, so we're driving home and we, uh, we stop for gas and, uh, everybody tries to use the bathroom. Remember that one? Yeah. And the pump wasn't working. And the pump wasn't working. And so that was like, our first clue. We're like, Oh something my Something is wrong. Something is amiss here. So we wound up looking and looking and looking and I pulled things out and there we have a battery shut off in one of the, uh, the containers in the cargo holes and the battery shut off was off. So these are things we did never not know had this to even deal happened. with or you know it was no. not a class A thing and didn't know we had a battery shut off. Then we realized the fridge is off too. Yeah. And actually already um, the pineapple had fallen out. I right. had a little container of cut pineapple and there's enough room and that the fridge can open even with the slide outs in. There's a, an island in the middle, but there's enough room you can actually o open one side. Yeah, the fridge opens You can over even there. get into a little bit of the freezer and you can also slightly open the other side. It's got two doors up top and a freezer drawer at the bottom. And so I thought, well, that's weird. And the fridge, so we knew the fridge was off. We're like, all right, whatever. Everything's contained. We'll keep it closed. Um, so we knew something was awry yes. and so we couldn't use the bathroom. Neil's Googling stuff, trying to figure out what's going on. We're like, we'll figure this out. We'll figure it again. This is an issue we haven't had to deal with. Right. Something new. So we keep driving and our goal, again, like we stopped at uh, Point South on the way back, we planned a, a KOA stop on the way. And we stopped at Point home. South on the way down. Yes. Yeah. On the way down. And on the way back, we also planned, okay, we need to stop and sleep somewhere, especially it's getting colder up north. We needed somewhere to plug in so we wouldn't be cold and that kind of thing. And uh, we kind of had an extra long 
winter it, winter turned into spring in a bit and it just it, it just cold. stopped raining recently so so we had planned staying at where do we say it? it was just outside of Pittsburgh, KOA, Washington, Washington, which is in Pennsylvania, Washington. south of right. It's south of uh, Pittsburgh, and it was before Pennsylvania, and it was just one we could find that was a open. Yes, because it was April, and not everything opens at the same time, and it was convenient. It was right off the. It was at the seventy seven. I think we're at. Yeah. I always mix the seventies up of where we go, and so. We hadn't checked it again or something, or I don't know. We were Googling it, we were trying to fix it, we couldn't fix it, and we tried at different stops, and we're like, all right, whatever, we'll deal with it. We're going to get somewhere and plug in soon anyway. It's okay. Yes. So we get to this um, KOA Washington. Yes. It is on a hill. Oh, it is not in... It, it is not on any kind of flat land whatsoever, and it is pitch dark. Probably the closest thing to the 77, but it was not convenient access for us no and it was very small town yes and it said it could accommodate like bigger rigs and all of that but the the streets go in there it's doable but not something i would suggest at night it was a little hairy it might have been actually better at night because some of the roads when traffic was coming seemed very narrow yeah so we so we made it to town. it. We get into the. We finally we kept to go up we this big there. hill and then come down a hill to pull yeah, into. It, it was, was a pull in spot. Pull in spot. But we couldn't get it straight and it wasn't level and oh my god. So then, it's like what was it ten? No, it was like eleven o'clock at yeah, night. Yeah, it was ridiculous. And we try not to make too much noise because of our stealth thing. And if it if it was light, I could have made the turn better. But there was like an embankment looking oh down. My god, it was so bad. I was trying not to go too far right and to we're make tired. the swing. We're tired. We're tired. So we wound up going ahead, and we we just leveled as best we could, go and open up, and the refrigerator was not on, and the ice cream was on its side, and everything melted. It's even more than that. What happened when it was when it was shut off? What happens? And we weren't thinking about this concept. Is you lose your seal on the fridge right. and as i think things are pretty violent in the back when you're driving in the yeah, truck you don't realize the bumps and the violence that's happening in the back yeah. of and we had a tough the, something was weird about going through south carolina yeah. on the roads it kept making this i don't know if anybody else has ever experienced this but i, I could see the different color pavement that would cause our we had to go 60 or the the whole RV would shutter, and we had every like everything was working as yeah, far it was as great. Yeah. the um the what do you call that the brakes for the yeah. you know yeah. everything was good, and it just shuttered. It was it was a rough ride back, and then through the mountains and all that. So by the time we got to Pennsylvania, uh, savage savagery had ensued. But it lost its seal when it wasn't you know when the fridge isn't on, it loses a seal. So the reason so it opened up. Well, the reason the fridge wasn't on was, was because the, the inverter. Inverter. Well, the that's in- what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Based on it hadn't been on, the seal broke for the fridge. Doors are open. You guys know how violent. No, we don't know any. This, again, the, the con to driving. Had we been in a Class A, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, let's tie up the doors. Let's yeah. figure something out. Yeah. Or the we refrigerator's not on. Let's do something let's about it. Let's do something. Yeah. So in the bottom, we had some lovely um, maple walnut ice cream. And, um, again, that damn pineapple. <laughs> And so we walked into the RV to get ready, like to open up and all over, thank God it's linoleum, all all over into what's Olivia's bedroom and the whole kitchen area was <laughs> maple walnut ice cream melted awful. all over. It was a whole container of it. So it came out the bottom of the fridge and just melted everywhere. So we had ripped everywhere. We're tired. You have to rip all the food out because it's all at this point gone. It's spoiled. Yeah, it's, it has spoiled. So then we also had to clean underneath and clean again and clean again just to get rid of the all sticky. All I could think, all I could think about, it was sticky already at this point and becoming stickier. But all I could think about is if we don't get in the nooks and crannies while it's still, like all I could think about is when it's in storage that ants and bugs. Yeah. Like oh my yeah. gosh, if we don't get this clean and it was going up under, like the rim around or yeah. the trim. I mean, it was a hot mess. It's 11 o'clock at night. We're tired. We're cranky. I'm just going to say words were colorful at this point. It was fun. But, it was fun. you know, that's the worst thing that happened. That was it. We, I mean, between driving down and driving back, those two. I mean, every trip has a story. And if those are the worst. But we had to clean it four or five times. Yeah. And then, and it, then well, again at home. It home. Yeah. But the thing is, to like. To make sure it. It probably still smells like maple walnut ice cream. No, because I cleaned it so oh well. Oh, my God. I think, really, it's. It's a house on wheels. We've always talked about this. Things are going to break. And so we always kept 
at least on a, we've learned to keep a list of everything that we find that's not working. So it was like the inverter. There was a couple lights out on the on the LED on the awning. I wrote that down. Uh, you know, like the hinge for or the latch for our bedroom uh, closets. They fix that. So we just keep a list. So I really, you guys really always recommend have to remember, keep a list of what's well, going on. Well, and this is based on a warranty. I mean, yes, it's a house of, of a house on wheels, and make sure you keep up on the warranty issues. Don't let these issues be any issue is going to become a bigger issue because right. you're going to keep using it and driving it. And so, especially when it's new, or if it's a, a new used one, right. you still have a warranty, and and you should anyway. Otherwise, well. I, I won't well, say and if with a new one you get one automatically for a year. With a used one you're buying into one. Highly recommend it because it costs you more in the long run. Some people say I'd rather pay for the one thing and right. maybe I'm fine on the others. I'd rather pay a little bit every month to handle all the big issues. But if you choose not to do that, right, that's fine. Warranty. Put money for aside you. then. Put money aside. But or just make sure you get things fixed because the longer things go, the bigger, worse they're gonna be. Problems. Bigger problems. You know, there was a little spot that might have been just something that came from the factory by the, Kathy saw it, by the slide by our bedroom over the floor. There was a little area that you could see daylight. I could see daylight under our bed. Bugs and mice and crap comes in. We don't want them in. We want them out. That's why we do this. So if you see that problem, get it fixed. Whatever you you see, get it fixed. We have no problem after every trip going back to Colton and they accommodate. And we say, this needs fixing and this needs fixing. Especially when it's under warranty. I want that stuff taken care of because, again, like Neil said, it's going to be a bigger problem later. And in the first couple of years... You're going to find all the the bugs. Yeah. That's why so you use it. The inverter problem was a problem. Bugs being problems, not bugs. There are problems. Yeah. Um, but the inverter problem was an issue. That shouldn't have happened. We dealt with it. And and I guess I would say to people, too, like, we yeah, we freaked out a little bit at the time because we just had a mess to clean up and we were tired. Um, but it happens, guys, every time. Like, if you're new into RVing and you go on a trip and you're like, oh, my gosh, Everybody knows when you RV, A, you're going to own a lot of them, mostly, and B, there's always going to be something that happens, and you just got to go with the flow. Like, we can look back on that now and go, okay, nobody died, everything's fine. Everything was good. But at the time, we were tired, but... You know, whatever we dealt with it. Really, it's just ice cream and. I lost really good milk. ice cream. No that was deal. really good. Yeah, that was the problem. You know, but we made it home. We cleaned it up again. We got it home, and honestly, it's been back at the shop for a long time, because they have had to do some factory stuff. So yeah. we ha- we have our local trips coming up soon. Um, we tend to not go away. This we just passed uh, Memorial Day weekend. I hope everybody had some good camping. Um, we don't. Come I always camp. hate to say I don't. I was going to start off by saying Happy Memorial Day past weekend, but I don't like to say Happy to that weekend because it is. It's, it's a time memorial. to remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I don't see that. Uh, it's not a time that I want to go. It's just too busy, and you pay more. So Neil and I tend to not go too often to the. We'll do Labor Day weekends, but mm-hmm. we don't tend to do much on Memorial I Day. I mean, for us, Labor Day tends to be the almost the end of everything because then Olivia's got track, and we've got yeah. this and that. And but the other not thing. anymore. That's no. all changing. Yeah. Our, well, our season track, is extending. We're changing it. But, um, you know, we've got our local trips coming up. So we're like, take your time. It's okay. Yeah. But we need it by such and such date. And, um, you know, so they've been taking care of everything and getting, doing the fight. Like there was some back and forth with uh, Grand Design about the wallpaper and this wall, that there was a bit of a ripple in it that I wouldn't have noticed until we were like living in it. And uh, so they're taking care of all of that, and then we'll get it back. We'll do our local trips, and we're you know we're going to talk to you guys. I think on the next show about what we're doing this summer and how and we're it, basically living out of the RV, which yep. is going to be really fun. And if there's any other things that happen, we'll just take it back and get them fixed. We'll just take it back then too, and they'll that's keep just fixing how you do it. it. Yep. Yeah, and that's just how it is. So you don't need to freak out about it. It's nah. something we all go through, um, and you know you've got to be up for the battle if it, if there's a, a a problem like that happened in factory or those kinds of things. That you've got to, you got to fight it. You got to get the stuff fixed. You've paid a lot of money for this wonderful thing, and it should work right. And um, also, your dealer should your dealer back should their help pro- you with their that. products, which they do. Ours has always been fantastic with us. We've never had to worry about anything. Yeah, so. they take care of it all. But you know, I know some people have had to do the fight themselves. Yeah. So um, just know that getting into it, that 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 can happen. So there's no surprises. So is that so it? it was a great trip. 
I that's it. I, yeah, I, I I have nothing bad to say no. other than we learned stuff <laughs> as no. we always do. And we came back to extremely really really we, busy we are lives. We're learning all the um, you know in, in our other models. We we got to know them well. Like you know when you move into a house, you know what the issues are. Now we're learning what the yeah. little idiosyncrasies are of the fifth wheel. And I love the storage in the fifth wheel. The storage is great. Storage I am, is I'm great. very happy with what we have. Yeah, I'm too. very happy with and our I, decisions. And I've been happy with our A's and C's. Everything's been like a journey for us to find out what fits well, our one, family the best. One thing leads to another. But and it's this, always been something to help us fit. Yeah. You know, find and, your fit. Yeah, and this this right now and going forward really fits us well with the spacing. We love the residential feel of it. It was so neat to be feeling like we lived in our home on the beach. Yeah. And uh, it does feel more homey than an A. It I, does. I met a, a gentleman the other day at your shop who uh, has gone uh, travel trailer, pop-up travel trailer, fifth wheel. Now he's in an A. And to him, the A is his yeah, perfect fit. Yeah. And I think for that's now, just, no, but <laughs> you know, we'll see. He'll probably, probably go to a change. diesel or something else. Yeah. But, you know, but that's how it goes. Everybody's yeah. going to find their fit, and I'm really finding that this this fifth wheel has just been a very, very good fit for us. Yeah. So thanks so, for being happy. patient with us when we for us to be able to get this show out to you. I'm sorry again, it took so long. We will do our best to keep. We will. You know, I definitely want to talk to you guys about what we're doing this summer, and I was hoping to fit that into this show a bit, but I think we're going to have to. We have to get going. get going and back to our lives again. And um, I just thank you for joining us, and thank you for any feedback I've been continuing to get emails and all that good stuff from everybody i love hearing and and please post your pictures on the facebook page we love to share that's what that community is all about so neil could you let them know how to get a hold of us well you can get a hold of us up yeah, good. yeah. Sure, you can get a hold of us you can email us at rv glamping adventures at gmail.com you can also find us on facebook at rv glamping adventures and also find us on youtube at rv glamping adventures and twitter twitter at rv glampers and also pinterest at rv yeah glampers. i don't really do anything on that Not but you really can pinterest. find us <laughs> and if you're in the lewiston area lewiston new york stop by inspirations on canvas which she's probably giving me a look going why are you doing oh this? my god but you can stop by if you're traveling up that er- that way yeah come say hi, come you, say hi. i'm also on uh, facebook under um inspirations, inspirations on, on canvas, canvas. And you can see kathy's, kathy's artwork her shop you can see she's got some great jewelry she's got lots of great a stuff. lot of my paintings are inspired i do a lot of beach scenes and different things a lot of abstract abstract and different things like that too but i'm very inspired on my trips i did a lot of painting actually on the last trip sitting on the beach um so you know that's a little piece of the RVing i can share with you too in the art world that i now live in so yeah find me there if you want to if you're interested in that but what's no pressure name, what's the name of your shop inspirations on canvas there you go oh my god all right you guys have a great week we'll get back to you real soon and keep on glamping have fun thank you <laughs>